Hey everyone, today I wanted to share with you how I have planned a unit study for my kids. And I wanna apologize at the beginning, I've been fighting uh, a cold the past week or so. And so my voice is a little, a little rough, but I have my water next to me and hopefully it's not too painful for you to, for you to listen to. So anyway, uh, I thought I would share the resources that I pulled for this unit study and show you kind of how I've laid it out. Um, and then also I wanted to just touch a little bit on just general, uh, my thoughts on putting together a unit study. So just from my perspective, what I've kind of learned over the years and um, things that I think maybe will help you be, or help me be more successful in uh, implementing unit studies and planning them. And so I wish that I had known <laughs> when I first started homeschooling, I wish that I had had better sense because I watched a lot of YouTube videos on unit studies. And there are some out there that are still out there that are the ones that I chose to, to follow. And I feel were the least helpful and the least realistic. And so if I can save you from kind of making my same mistakes, I will share this. You don't need um, everything Amazon has to offer on a particular topic in order to do a good unit study. I kind of fell prey to that in the beginning and I would, on whatever topic I was doing, let's say ancient Egypt, I would get so many books, chapter books, picture books, nonfiction books, activity books, and then all the games and all the craft kits and all the stuff. And then very quickly realized like, I can't, do all this like what am I supposed to do with all this it doesn't how do you realistically how do you get through all of that stuff um and I regret I think because in the past I've probably shared unit studies that have looked like that I think I've gotten better over the years um but I feel like that is really not helpful and um what I wish that I had learned early on was how to kind of uh, narrow my focus and make uh, a few strong selections and really have a plan for them. Um, because that's going to, I think, have a better chance of equaling success for a unit study. So uh, the first thing is you don't need all the things. And then the second thing is to really try to set some goals, what it is you want to accomplish in the uh, time frame that you have. And so I guess that would be a third, a third thing is to really map out how long you want this to take, how long do you have, and then make sure you're picking um, items and setting goals that you can fit within that time frame. So I think that that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, so moving on to the unit study I actually planned. Um, this one is kind of on fake news and bias, uh, the news, social media, like all of that stuff. I will share the goals I set with you in a minute. Um, I think first I will show you the resources that I am planning to use in one way uh, or another for this unit study, either that it helped me plan it or it's a resource I'm actually going to share with my kids during the study. Now, I will say that my focus narrowed um, as I was planning, like I had a general idea of what I wanted to do. And then as I pulled in resources and started looking at, uh, different things, I started, I was able to narrow my focus a lot more. Um, when I started, I basically had the idea that I wanted to do something on fake news and bias, stereotyping. Um, and I wanted to use the story of the three little pigs. Those are the only ideas that I had. And so then I started pulling in a lot of resources from my library and doing a lot of searching um, online to see what I could find to support and kind of help um, help me get some, I don't know, focus in a little bit more or um, focus in more, but also kind of flesh out some of the areas that I wanted more of my focus to go into. So I'll get into the details in a minute. Let me show you the resources that I used um, or plan to use. So this one, um, 
I actually had to pay for this one. I think everything else was free. This was about, I think, $6. And it's from a UK uh, website called Literacy Tree. And it is a writing route for the Three Little Pigs Guardian advert. Uh, one of the items I wanted to use was this video that the Guardian did um, to kind of, sh it's, I'll talk about it more, but this was a unit on how to use that, um, how to use that video. And it has way more in it than I plan to use, uh, but it was good for me to kind of see what could be done with it. Uh, I'm only using, I think, one thing <laughs> from here. Uh, but anyway, so this is from the Literacy Tree, and I feel like it was, even though I'm not using uh, much of it, I still think it was worth my $6. This was, I think, a blog post I found. I don't remember where it came from because it didn't print, but you could probably find it if you Google teaching character point of view, the big bad wolf versus the three little pigs. Again, I'm picking a couple ideas from there. Um, and the next one is Media Smarts. Excuse me, how to get a drink. Stereotyping and bias, the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. So this is a lesson plan. And again, I picked some parts out of here. Uh, we get the week junior and this is, um, we love this magazine. My kids look forward to it every time it comes in the mail, but we will use this probably as an example of um, news that's kind of done right and good headlines with an article that reflects what the headline is. So I just pulled one of our old ones uh, to show you, but we will definitely use that. Okay, this book is one that from the beginning I wanted to use because I think it looks great. It's called Killer Underwear Invasion, How to Spot Fake News, Disinformation, and Conspiracy Theories. And I love the way that it's written in kind of like a comic graphic novel style. Here are the contents so that you can see what is included. And then it is set up like this. And I've gone back and forth on how I wanna use this. Um, I thought I had settled on just having my kids each read this independently. I thought that would be easier just with all the little text boxes and things. Um, but I think we're gonna read this like in our morning group work uh, during the month that we're doing this study is what I'm thinking right now. Anyway. This one's really good and I'm excited to use that. This is just one that I've been reading for me that I found enjoyable that happens to be on the same topic. And this was recommended by Emily at Build Your Library. So that is a good one. All right, the next one is called, Can You Believe It? How to Spot Fake News and Find the Facts by Joyce Grant. This one I, is one we're gonna be using um, all the way through. Uh, I like that it's just, it's like just the right length of everything, the right amount of illustrations. Uh, it leans obviously a little younger than my seventh grader, more for my fourth grader, which if I didn't say that, I'm doing this with a fourth grader and a seventh grader. Uh, but I think the information in it is good for both of them. It's just more doable. It's a better length than some other things that I found. I'll show you one of those in a minute, but... <coughs> um, yeah, this one I'm excited about. I think it looks really good. The one that's longer that I originally planned on using that I'm not going to use in the way that I thought I would is called Breaking the News by National Geographic. What's real, what's not, and why the difference matters. I think this book is excellent, but it's a very long book. So how I'm going to use this is this is going to be one that's out for my kids to look through and read. Uh, we'll have different times during our school week where they have an opportunity to do that. And then I will pull out um, certain little areas of this uh, if I need it to support uh, the activities on a, on a certain day. So I really think this one is excellent. I just felt this would be overwhelming for us to complete cover to cover in the time allotment that I have. All right, the next one, I actually have two books from this series. I only have one of them to show you right now. This is Cracking the Media Literacy Code, uh, is the series. And this one is Understanding the News. And then the other one I have is called Understanding Social Media. Fortunately, my library only had like two in the series, so I had to purchase one. And then I was able to use this one from the library. 
But again, I think this is good information in a more, uh, a way that's easier for us to consume. So here is the table of contents. And then I can easily read this. It's not like an overwhelming amount of information. So I think that's definitely a good resource. And then uh, the three little pigs. There are a million versions and tellings and retellings of the three little pigs. And you can easily uh, get overwhelmed if you try to do too many of them. So I picked four. And then likely what I will do um, is I will pull in other versions from the library to have out for my kids to look at during the week. But only four are going into my actual instruction. So I chose to pick two that are more of a traditional uh, telling. Uh, this one I chose uh, because of the ending. This is a more traditional um, ending to the story where uh, the wolf is eaten. And then this one has the um, retelling where the wolf uh, goes down the chimney and it's hot and he, uh, you know, shoots back out of the chimney and runs away. So I chose to use those two. And then I chose two that are from the wolf's point of view. So I have the ever popular The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by A. Wolf, as told to John Cheska. And this is kind of a classic that's been around for quite a long time, but you hear the wolf side of the story of what really happened, according to him. And then this one as well, called No Lie, Pigs in Their Houses Can Fly, the story of the three little pigs as told by the wolf. And this is by Jessica Gunderson. So those are the only four that I'm using uh, within my lesson. All right. So let me go ahead and show you what I have planned out here. Um, and this is still subject to change, but as of right now, this is kind of my plan. So I did write some goals, uh, some things that I'm hoping uh, to accomplish. And one is to use the story of the three little pigs to recognize and understand stereotyping and bias, both within literature and just in general. Uh, to understand how bias can distort or influence perspective and what is news and how to spot fake news and understanding the difference between fact and opinion and trustworthy versus questionable news, or, news and sources and how to distinguish um, oh, and how disinformation spreads on social media. So those are my goals that I've worked with. Like I said, that was narrowed down a lot from my original, just like very general uh, fake news and bias. All right, and then I just have it broken down by week. So week one, I'm going to use that Media Smarts lesson on stereotyping and bias. I'm just picking a couple of things uh, from there. We're going to read the two traditional tellings of the three pigs. And then we're gonna look at other stories and fairy tales that have wolves in them and talk about the role of wolves in fairy tales, compare and contrast the stereotyping bias and messages in The Three Little Pigs versus, say, Little Red Riding Hood or Lom Po Po. And then in this um, little lesson plan, they have a wolf story analysis sheet. So we can um, fill this out for whichever stories we choose to do. And that's week one. So I should also say that this four weeks that we're doing this, we tend to do what most of our group work on Fridays. So this is not going to take place the whole week. This would just be in like an hour on Friday. So I was trying to make sure that whatever I put into each week could potentially be completed in just a one session uh, time together. Sorry, I needed another drink. Uh, any longer reading, like the uh, fake news, uh, the killer, what was it called? This one, Killer Underwear Invasion. I likely will not do this on a Friday because it would be too much. This is something that whatever week I think it's going to fit best, I will just start reading it on Monday during our morning group time. We usually have a short amount of group time during the week. And then we will 
finish with it, whatever that Friday is. That's kind of how I plan to do that. All right, week two, I pulled my ideas from, oops, this teaching character point of view. And um, so we're gonna talk about what if the traditional tale is not the real story? And we're going to read both of those retellings from the wolf's perspective. And then we're gonna have a discussion who's telling the truth, who benefits from this story being told, who's telling the story, what knowledge do they have, how does perspective affect the telling. And then we're going to just do a little writing assignment, um, either from that, um, either from here where they have one listed, or also in the back of this book, they have some critical thinking tie-ins, and I wrote those down on my paper here. So um, one of them is to compare and contrast the wolf from one of the retellings uh, versus the original uh, story. And then another one is specifically from this book, uh, what if Mort, who is the pig in this story, um, told this story? What details might be different? How, how might the story look differently if it came from his perspective? All right, so that is uh, week two. Week three, we are going to be reading the Understanding the News book, and we're going to look at um, the story of the Three Little Pigs as a news story, essentially. And so we're going to read this book, and then we're gonna be talking about headlines. And so I have one section marked in here. If we haven't read this whole book yet, um, if we have, We'll go back and reread uh, these two pages, which I think kind of go along well with uh, headlines. This is another one <clears throat> that we will uh, likely read a little bit during our group time each morning uh, leading up to whatever this Friday, leading up to week three. And then uh, the kids are going to write a headline for the Three Little Pigs that shows bias based on whichever version of the story that they believe to be true. So that is week three. And then week four, we are going to watch uh, the video that The Guardian put out. I don't know if you all are familiar with it. I was not until I started um, putting this unit together, but it's actually a pretty old video. It came out in 2012. And The Guardian uh, put it out as a way to kind of show, a, f a funny way to show how they cover a new story like from all angles. And so it's kind of told through the story of newspaper headlines and um, kind of these debates on social media between people reacting to the different headlines. Uh, I'm trying to find it real quick here on my iPad so I can just show you. I'm not gonna show the video. Um, because it is copyrighted, I'm sure. And um, and it's too long. But I will show it, and then I will try to link it uh, down below. But it is just, uh, it's called Three Little Pigs Advert. And it was done by The Guardian. And, okay, yeah. So this is what that looks like. And let's see here, oops. Uh, let's see, yeah, imagine how we might cover the story of the Three Little Pigs in print and online, follow the story from the paper's front page headline through a social media discussion, and finally to an unexpected conclusion. So. We're gonna start week four with that video, and then we're gonna have a discussion about bias, perspective, social media, how our personal bias affects how we might uh, react or interpret the news, and how people form an opinion based on headlines alone. And then from there, we are going to read the um, understanding social media. And then I found a TED Ed video, which is uh, about um, headlines of scientific like research scientific studies and it 
it's really good. It's called Can You Spot the Problem in These Headlines? So we're gonna watch that and then we're going to basically create our own social media post. Uh, my kids don't have social media, but they're gonna create in Canva like a little, um, almost like a meme, but like a something that we could post on social media with some graphics and some text based on a headline that they saw without reading the article. They're gonna make something that they might share on social media. We're gonna use Canva so that they can learn how to use Canva. And then after they've done that, we're gonna look at the actual article and see, uh, hopefully, <laughs> how it can be misleading when you see things on social media and you really have to uh, kind of vet everything that you see. I also like in this book, Understanding the News, and I suspect there will be something similar in the social media one, but it has, this I thought I'd copy out as a bookmark for my kids um, to kind of go through the process of how to spot fake news. Consider the source, read beyond, check the author, check the date, check your bias, look for supporting sources, is it a joke, and ask the experts. So that's how we're gonna kind of finish out the unit. Now this TED Ed video I think is really good and I didn't find this until closer to the end of my research. And so there are other ones that I think would go really well in here. So likely I made myself a note to check out the other TED Ed videos um, because I will likely sprinkle some of those in as well. All right, I think that that is everything that I wanted to share. Um, and hopefully that's helpful for you, either if you want wanted some resources on this topic or if you wanted some tips on putting together a unit study. Um, hopefully that covers both for you. So if you have any questions, I would love to answer them down in the comments below.